Okay, so again, um, if you're gonna, if you wish to retake a test, because anyone can retake it, I don't care if you missed one point or if you missed a bunch, it doesn't matter. Um, you just have to spend a minimum of five minutes with me uh, to go over any questions that you possibly missed, um, you know, or questions that maybe you want to refresh. I want it done this week. Um, so anytime this week, come in. Uh, I don't care if it's today after school, if it's t tomorrow morning. I don't care. Just show up. Uh, you can either let me know via email. You can just tell me in the hallways. So you don't have to tell me right now. You can just wait till later. Um, now, here's the thing you need to plan for, though. I will not not be available Friday after school. I have a basketball game. I leave at 3 o'clock. So you can't retake it Friday after school. Morning is fine, not after school. So keep that in mind. And not during ninth period Friday because I leave literally at the beginning of that, that block. So get, get that through. You need to take it early, and I want it done this week. So uh, plan accordingly. If it doesn't work in your schedule, then it doesn't work in your schedule figure it out okay so all right um but yeah so test scores are online uh you can go see how it's affecting your grade and all that good stuff but now if you took it online you'll have to uh you'll have to open it up via google classroom or pull up a notebook maybe you still have it written in your notebook or maybe you're lucky enough you had a printer at home you printed it and you wrote it on there i don't know how you did it so okay everyone's got it we ready to go we're gonna go through it here in a second um yeah so okay all right I don't think I have anyone on the Zoom today. No, I don't. Okay, good. Didn't know if anyone would be Zooming today. All right. Okay, here's your test. It's out of 51 points. Um, so it's 51. There was a couple different versions of this thing out there. So if you took it during ninth period um, on Friday, you would have had a completely different test. So kind of look at the first problem, see if it's the same problem. If it's not... Um, you'll uh, you'll have to watch maybe the later video for period nines to see what they have. So, um, all right. Uh, but anyways, uh, in behavior, um, you know, factoring uh, to find x-intercepts, the y-intercept by plugging in zeros, symmetry if it's even odd or not symmetric, and then turning points. You had to do that for every problem. You did not have to draw it. Some people like drew a little graph. That's fine as long as it was drawn correctly. I kind of looked at it, uh, but don't. You shouldn't be writing something down and then your graph says the exact opposite of it. So that's something that you might want to check. Okay, so on number on number one, uh, this uh, this item, the tails are going opposite directions. Here's how I know that. Um, the, re the reason why they're going opposite direction is that you have this power of three. Um, when you have a power of three, an object that's cubic or odd power, the tails go opposite directions. Um, the left side will go down, the right side goes up, if you're specifically telling me. Uh, now, x-intercepts. I factored this thing apart really quickly. I pulled out the x's from each of these items. That left me with this. Then I factored that right side apart. That was x squared minus 4, which is the difference of squares. And so when I factored that thing apart, it was x plus 2, x minus 2. So there's three x-intercepts. Zero, negative 2, and positive 2 in, like, no particular order. Uh, now, the y-intercept, if I plugged a bunch of zeros into all my x's on the original problem here, this original problem, this thing, if I plugged in zeros, I actually get zero out of that thing. So it actually hits zero, zero. Uh, it is odd symmetric. Here's how I know. It's odd symmetric. Yes, it is symmetric. Uh, it has odd powers. It has a three and a one. That's odd power, so it's odd symmetric. Uh, it has two turning points. You just take the highest power and you subtract one off of it. Questions? Okay, uh, the next one, it is not symmetrical. I can tell by this second graph here. Um, this thing is not symmetrical. Here's the reason why. It has a mixed bag of even and odd powers. So uh, there's even and odd powers there on that one. So it is not symmetrical. The tail is gonna go opposite directions again because it's an odd power. Um, I factored out the x squared in the front because I did it by grouping, so I pulled out x squared, so it's x plus 8. In the back, I pulled out a negative 4, so it's x plus 8 in the back. When you factor it even further, here's what you get. And then that x squared minus 4 separates to x plus 2, x minus 2. So there's three x-intercepts again, negative 2, positive 2, and a negative 8 in no particular order. Uh, the y-intercept, if I plug zeros into the original problem, into all these x's, you'd get 0 minus 32, which is negative 32. And then it is not symmetrical, as I said, and it has two turning points. So there you go. That is all of your stuff. Um, questions? Okay, again, 
each one of those problems is worth seven points, seven steps. And so you had to, you know, show me that you knew what you're doing. So again, this is, we're just reviewing the test. So, uh, so there you go. There's your first two questions. Okay. All right. Uh, the bottom problem, you had to you had to long divide. It did not work out nice and pretty. It worked out to be a three in the end, uh, but it wasn't. It didn't work out to be like a zero. Uh, so you do have a remainder. Um, so on this one, I had to figure out what do I multiply on a two x that makes four x squared. Well, I had to multiply by a two x. So when I multiply by a two x, I get four x squared and a negative two x. Then I switch the signs, and you go straight down. You get negative six here. You bring down the next item, and then you, we have to figure out again, what do I multiply on this 2x out front? That would get me closest to negative 6x. Well, I have to multiply by a negative 3. So that would be a negative 6x, and a this would end up being a positive 3 here, because it would be a negative 3 times a negative 1. And my green is terrible. You can't even see that. And what you're going to end up with here, if I, if I zoom in here, um, you're going to have a 6 minus 3, which is 3, not 9. The people who put 9 is because you had your negative signs wrong. You forgot to carry a negative sign, and then you forgot to switch it. There's a lot of things you messed up at that point. So, okay, questions. Okay, uh, number 4. Whoa. All right, number 4 here. Uh, this problem had a lot to do. Uh, the ninth periods group. Ninth period's uh, test. This number four, uh, it only had two roots. It had negative one and negative one. It repeated. And then they're imaginaries. Yours actually had three. Three nice, clean numbers. Um, and it was negative one. That's what I was kind of looking for. So negative one worked right away. So when I divided negative one out of this thing, again, how I got those numbers, I take the back number and the front number, and you make every combination of the, the back number over the front number when you factor it apart. Ten is the factors of ten are one, two, five, and ten. So you make all the combinations. I figured out that negative one worked. So when I long or when I synthetic divide it out, you can see I drop, multiply by the number in the box, drop, multiply by the number in the box, drop, multiply by the number in the box. You get zero. That means it worked. So this item is all the rest of the roots. So negative one worked because it gave me a remainder of zero. Uh, I, that's how I check it my calculator. Then the item that's left was factorable, and it was x plus 10, x plus 1, which is negative 1 and negative 10. So it actually had a double root. So uh, that was the similarity between period 9's group and your guys' test, that negative 1 worked in both. Um, but they were completely different looking problems. Uh, all right, number 5. Um, okay, your Descartes rule of sign had three sign switches right away. Uh, you can see them, you can count there. So you, when you go down by twos, it's three or one. And then the negatives, when I plugged in negative x's into everything, this is what it turned out to be. Because the item, um, this turned out to be positive because the negative stuck around. This, the negative stuck around here, so I made that positive. So there was zero sign switches throughout that whole problem. So that means that there's zero negative numbers that worked. So it was... Uh, you just count straight over, and these should add it to be 3. The reason why they should add it to be 3, it's always your highest power. That's what they should add it to be. All right, but there you go. There's your Descartes rule of sign. It was 5 points. You had to show me all the work that you could do there. Um, yeah, pretty straightforward. Just kind of looking what you had. All right, uh, number 6, you had to do um, quadratic formula. I was really surprised somebody got this wrong because they put the A, B, and C in the wrong spots. Your A is the uh, 3, B is the negative 15, and C is the 12. I had somebody switch the 12 and 15 around for some reason. Um, so you plug them in, you get to this number, um, you subtract, you get 81, and then um, you'd, you'd actually do that top, the square root of 81 is 9. So 15 plus 9, or 15 minus 9, you divide by 6, and it worked out nice and pretty either way. So it turned out to be a 4 over 1. So... Um, yeah, the person that had the 15 and 12 stitch around, um, they said it was a no solution. It had imaginary roots because they got a weird negative number in that radical. So don't do that. <laughs> don't make those mistakes. So, All right, back page. You had to complete the square. So I had to move the 8 over, take half the middle. Half the middle is 1 here. 
square it. Crystal hooks to the office, please. Crystal hooks. So half the middle squared is one. You have to add that to the other side. Now the reason why I add a one to the other side is there's no number out front. So it ends up being a nine over there. Then how you complete the square is you take the square root over. You take the square root to the other side uh, to get three. Uh, positive or negative three, I should say, because when you take a square root, it's positive or negative. And then you'd subtract this one across. So you can see I get two or a negative four. I think the most common mistake somebody made um, was taking the one over and forgetting to make it negative. That was the most common mistake that I saw a lot of people made. Simple mistake. Okay, uh, ooh, don't want to do that. Uh, number eight, uh, you had to find the max or min on this problem by completing the square again. So I moved the 10 over. Now on this one, you have to actually factor out uh, the three. And this is where a lot of people went wrong. A lot of people forgot to factor out the three. A lot. You have to take out that number first. You're not dividing everything by three. You have to take it out of the parentheses. When you take that three out of the parentheses, the three X and the 12 X had to simplify, right? You had to divide them both by three. Uh, so half the middle squared, half of four is two squared. It's four. You have to take that times the number out front. So that's 12. And that's what you add to the other side. And that makes 22. As you can see there, it didn't look pretty. And then, um, yeah, your your max is negative two and negative twenty-two. There you go. You ignore the three when you read off the max. That's a vertex, by the way, or it's a minimum. I'm sorry, not, not max, but a minimum because it's going up. Tails go up. Okay. Well, ooh. Uh, last question. You had to complete the square just like the last two problems. So I moved the six over. I had to factor out the eight. Take half the middle squared. You have to take it times the number out front. Add that across. Right, so I had to add a 32 over 4 times 8. Um, and so that makes 26 over there. Um, so my vertex ended up being negative 2, negative 26. And I had to go up and down from there. So I had to go up 132nd and down 132nd. So from that location. Now how again, how I do that, I always set 1 over 4c equal to the number out front um, of the parentheses, which was the 8. So you can see my work there. Okay, there you go. Um, it's total, this page is worth 17. Uh, the last page was worth 16, and the first page, I believe, is worth uh, 18. So there you go, it's a total of 51. If you choose to do a retake, it's gotta be done this week, not Friday after school, because I leave at three o'clock Friday after school for basketball. I want those back, so that when you come in, we can, re, um, we can review anything. Um, remember, it's a minimum of five minutes review, just a problem that you missed, something you need to know how to do. Um, the test will be the exact same size. I just make up a new one. Um, so just kind of keep that in mind. It will be a brand new test. It won't be the exact same one that you have now. And it will not be you know, the other sections test because they had a completely different test. It'll be new. I make up a new one. So, all right, but there you go. I'm gonna walk around, I'll collect those here from you. So, uh, test scores are online. Already have them entered. Ooh, 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 sorry. So they're already in through the grade book. So you can go check it out. You see how it's affecting you. So. Okay, all right, um, here's what you need now. You just need notes, so just take out your notes for right now. I just want to do a kind of a light introduction to stuff we talked about last Monday and Tuesday, and then we're going to be done. Probably this week uh, after today, I'll probably just do normal stuff on the marker board, normal marker and marker board. I won't do this iPad thing for a while. I know that at some point we'll probably have to go back to it, but for right now, I'm gonna probably just go marker board and marker for a while. So I know that it's not convenient for the notes on the videos, because the videos look nice and clean when you can see it on the iPad screen. But 
no one's no one in this room is out i mean the people that are gone are because they have a doctor's appointment or a dentist appointment or something like that so um so i'll probably do just do normal notes from now on so i'll probably have a camera set up looking at the marker board at some point so keep that in mind um so yeah so it might seem a little different where i might do a different setup for the next couple days in here unless somebody needs to be online then we'll have to figure out something to do unless it's a majority i don't know if i'll do the ipad for a while um the other classes i have a lot of people that are still out and stuff for this week uh so they're still on ipad uh but it wasn't like the majority like you guys are all here um i don't know if i'll necessarily use the ipad it's just i'd rather be up walking around using the marker board space writing bigger larger letters so you guys can see it so but yeah um okay i just want to take uh, a couple notes here today just to kind of fill you in on what we talked about last monday and tuesday in case you were absent you were gone you were in a different room taking a test for me because i know some people were gone on either monday or tuesday or something like that they were gone taking a test uh so i want to kind of fill you in on kind of the new section that we're in um and kind of fill you in on the math that we're going to be getting ourselves into tomorrow um tomorrow i would probably expect maybe a small assignment tomorrow something like where i submit something on google like form and you have to go answer it um, where you have to like do some math on a piece of paper, submit your answer, that type of thing. Um, I'll still be st I'll still be using Google Classroom to submit all homework from now on. The reason why I like that, it's one stop shop. You can do it from anywhere. You don't have to be in the room to turn it in, and it lets you know if you turned it in or not. And I can see it very clearly, so I don't have that issue where parents are like, "Oh, did Johnny turn it in yet?" No, it's been out for two weeks and it still hasn't been submitted yet. So it's just a nice reminder like, hey, you need to turn this in. So I'm gonna still be using Google Classroom. I know it's not convenient for some people, but it shouldn't be that bad. You did it on a piece of paper and you took a picture of it. How hard is that? So you guys can use Snapchat, you can probably do this. So, all right, all right. Um, so uh, let's talk about a few notes here. Let's talk about the section we're in. We're in conic sections. So if you don't know what a conic section is, uh, a conic section is a piece of a cone. Right? Uh, there's different parts of conics, uh, different types of shapes. So the different shapes you should be familiar with. Um, an ellipse or an oval, maybe that's a better way to put it. That's something we're gonna get in this, this unit, this unit four, chapter nine. Um, we're gonna get the formula for it, okay? Um, the other types of things, we're gonna talk about circles one more time. I think we talked about circles in geometry. We'll talk about in here just the formula, the generic thing of it. How does it look? How do we use it? Um, now, the section we're in right now is still based on parabolas or um, quadratics. Um, so that's the section we're in now. That's the first section of Chapter 9 or Unit 4, whatever you want to call it. That's the section we're in. In fact, I'm going to highlight that. This is the one we're doing currently. And the, the, the other parts that we're going to eventually get to, uh, the last section, I think it's the fourth section of Chapter 9, is called a hyperbola. So the hyperbola is this fourth section. There's only four sections in this unit, four. Um, so it's gonna go really fast. I'm talking, this is probably our shortest unit that we've had up to this point. Um, the test comes really quick. Uh, we only have you know four assignments before a test, so keep that in mind. Think about that for a few seconds. Um, so a test for us, in theory, could be not the end of next week, but maybe the week after. So like the week before winter break, that type of thing. Um, so this test comes quick. Uh, we'll have a test before winter break. Uh, semester test for us, I think is after. I, I'll have to look, I think it's after. I have to look at the schedule that the administration set up because they tell us what our testing is. Sorry, that's how it works around here. So, um, and so yes, we take a semester test and all that good stuff. So um, we'll kind of do a build up. I'll do a quick review and cover the major topics that are on that test. It's not everything, it's just major things that we talked about. Uh, but yeah, so this is the section. We're in parabolas. That's the kind of the unit that we're in. And so if you don't know what a parabola looks like, uh, this is this is a parabola, right? This is It's that U-shape kind of drawing that we've been drawing. Uh, talking about, you know, does it hit the x-axis? Does it hit the y-axis? Do the tails go up or down? Um, we're actually going to talk about if it's turned sideways. That'll be a new thing tomorrow. We'll look at that. How do they write the equation when it's like turn on its side? So it's facing you know the y-axis instead. So something like this. This this is still a parabola. You can still have something that looks like that. Still works. 
Um, I'll show you the differences in formulas here. Uh, but the goal that we're looking at in this unit, other than just knowing the formula and knowing how to draw it, is knowing its intersection points. You know, would it cross a line or would a line cross it? If you were to draw a line, you know, at a diagonal, something like this. So if I was drawing this red line, would it cross the one in green? Well, duh, you saw it right here, right? It actually hit. But would it hit it again? Yeah, it'd probably hit it somewhere up here, right? If I kept continuing that path, you know, and this thing kept going, probably hit up there somewhere. So that's what we're looking at currently. Like, can we find these points of intersections on something kind of complicated, and you know, something that's not easy? Um, so that's something I want you to be aware of. So let's let's talk about the idea here. So let's let's go through our first section. Uh, let's, this is one note. This is my only note I want to do today. This is it. My one problem, and then we're done. And then tomorrow we'll go more in depth. Um, so I like your, I like you to write this down. We'll do it two different ways. We're going to do this kind of with graphing, so you'll see how to draw. And then we're going to do it by a more analytical way. And that was the thing I introduced on Tuesday last week, something I threw at you to see if you guys uh, could catch on. Um, that was what the Google question of the day was on Tuesday, the thing that I was grading that you had to go back and look at. So if you did not submit the Google question of the day on Tuesday, you might want to go back and watch that video and submit it. So Because um, those are graded, the Monday and Tuesday's questions were. So. All right, um, so yeah, let's talk about our quadratic. So let's say my quadratic is x squared. Can you guys see that? Oh, yeah. uh, x squared plus, uh, let's go plus 5x, and let's go with minus 6. Let's do that, okay? And a line that we're going to have, let's go with a line, another equation, let's go with one that's like y equals, 2x plus 3. Let's do that. Okay, so what we're going to do here first is just see, can we kind of identify where these things would cross? Like get a rough estimate where these two lines would cross. And then what we're going to do is we're going to look at a, a different way of doing this problem where you don't have to look at the drawing because the drawing is not exact, right? The drawing is kind of nice to see to get a ballpark where we're going to be. Uh, but I, I do want to do a more analytical way, a better way of doing it so that we get the right answer, the exact answer, even if it's a decimal or a nice number. Um, that's what we're going to look at on the next one. So, um, so on this one, let's draw the uh, let's draw the parabola first. Uh, so this is just on this last test we just took, right? That it's the tails go up, right? The tails go the same direction. If I if I plugged in a bunch of zeros here for all my x's, my y intercept would be negative six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Yep. So that's the y intercept. Um, if I factored it apart, because it is factorable, this will be my x-intercepts. Uh, I'll be x plus 6, x minus 1. That's how I get the 5 in the middle. So what are my x-intercepts on this one? Where would it hit? What are the numbers that represent those parentheses? What does this represent? Negative six, so that's about right there, right? One, two, three, four, five, six, yep. And then what does this one represent? One. One, positive one. So I can already get a sense this thing's kind of looking like this. Now, if I really want to go in depth, I could figure out where that lowest point is. I'm just going to give you a rough drawing here. And let's draw that line. Um, this is my linear equation. Where do I start on that linear equation? Three. Right, three on the x or three on the y-axis. Uh, this is my y-intercept, right? That's something we talked about in geometry and algebra one days. My slope. Where's that slope go? Yeah, uh, because any you know any number can be put over uh, over one, and that's your slope. That's a rise and run. So it always runs to the right. So I'm going to rise two, run one from that purple dot. So rise two, run one, rise two, run one. I think I already kind of figured out where they're crossing. Uh, but if I draw this kind of more exact, it's kind of what it looks like. So it looks like it's hitting kind of up here, about right there. And it looks like it's hitting kind of roughly down here. And that's the whole point of this. Like where are those points of intersection? So that looks like it's over two. And it's up 
what, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven ish. Over two up seven, and this spot is one, two, three, four, down one, two, three, four, five, about five. So over four, down five. Kind of looks like where it's crossing roughly. And again, that's ballparking. Does that make sense how I'm like figuring out those dots, the coordinates? Remember, the coordinates are always written right and left first, up and down second, and you write coordinates down. Now that is not exact science, right? I'm literally guessing. So on like a test question, something like that, you would have to give me an educated guess where you think they're gonna meet. Something like that, be in the ballpark. Maybe it's not exact, but you're in the right range. Now, I wanna do this one more way but better. Do this by a better method to figure out where it actually meets. Um, so that's what I want to do. So I'm going to rewrite these equations down. So y equals x squared plus 5x minus 6. This is the same problem. This is my only problem here. This I'm going to stop after this one. And my other line was y equals 2x plus 3. That was the other equation. And I want to figure out where they cross without drawing it doing it by a much better method, using the methods we've learned in this class. So the trick is, if we're looking for where these things cross, I'm looking for where what makes these two equations equal to each other. So the x squared plus 5x minus 6, I want to know when is it equal to the 2x plus 3. Right? When are those y's equal to each other? So to solve, uh, I'll complete the square. And, and when you complete the square, the the vertices, you know, the uh, the factoring of it, that's that's where they they're actually meet the x's. So I'm going to move this two x over, move this six over. So if I move the six, that makes nine. If I move the two x over, it'll subtract and that makes three. So I'll subtract the two x across. We have to take half the middle and square it. Uh, half the middle is one point five. We square it, it's two point two five. We'll add that to both sides. We'll factor this thing apart. <coughs> so this ends up being x plus 1.5 squared. And over here, this ends up being 11.25, I think. And it's always half the middle. That's how I factor that thing so fast. And so my my actual um, solving of this, where you actually like move things around and actually like uh, solve, I would take the square root to the other side, so plus or minus the square root of 11.25, and then I'm going to move that 1.5 over and it becomes negative. So whatever the square root of 11.25 is, what is the square root of 11.25? Ends up being 3.35, roughly. So this is negative 1.5 plus or minus that. And these are be my two x's where they cross. So negative 1.5 plus 3.35. So one of my coordinates where they actually met was 1.85 for the x. Or the other one, when I take negative 1.5 and I subtract 3.35, I get negative 4.8. Those are my two x's. Again, how I'm getting those numbers. I'm taking you know, those last numbers, negative 1.5 plus 3.35 and negative 1.5 minus 3.35. Um, minus 3.35. Uh, yeah. Bless you. Put the five on the back. Okay, now how do I find the y numbers? Plug in X. Yeah, you plug them in. And what I'd recommend when you plug them in, those x's, plug them in this equation. Plug them into the easier looking equation and it spits out your y's. So if I plug in a 1.85, 1.85 times 2, and then add the 3, because you're taking that x times 2 plus 3, I'm getting 6.7. And if I plugged in the negative 4.8, 8, 5, take it times 2 and add 3, I'm getting a negative 6.7. <laughs> that worked out wild. It was the same number. Huh. That's 
just a dumb coincidence. So there, those are the two exact locations. So if I go back to my equation, like back to that last drawing, my guesses were insanely close. If you go back and look at that last thing I just did, they're insane. Like, look how close this was. I guess 2 comma 7, and I guess negative 4, negative 5. That's pretty close for guessing. It's 1.8 and 6.7. I said 2 and 7. And then the other one was negative 4 and negative 5, and it's negative 4.8 and almost negative 7. It's negative 6 point something. That's pretty good for guessing, for, you know, drawing it really quickly. So, all right, that's it for me. That's a lot.